Hello, everyone. Welcome to Behind the Mic, our next to last one. We want to thank all of you who have spent some time checking in on our reports every single week. It's Colgate this week after a bye week for Lafayette. The Leopards coming off a of victory. That's good news. And Colgate is certainly a very formidable opponent, having lost a tough ball game for second place in the Patriot League just last week against Fordham. And Mike, uh, Dan Hunt in his uh, third season at Colgate has done a really nice job, but continues the tradition of the way Colgate likes to run the ball. Everything centers around Jake Melville. Melville. The guy has been just outstanding, 7,700 plus yards in his career, uh, almost 2,200 yards this, this, uh, this year. And uh, he, he does it equally well running and throwing the ball. Yeah, he's, he's trouble no matter what he does. I mean, when he lines up back there, and he, he's a guy that I always talk about that doesn't run the read option. He, he doesn't dabble in it. He, he's the guy. I mean, he, if you want to go and look at the read option and study it, you want to watch Dan Hunt and watch a, a guy like Jake Melville. And they've had a line of guys, Sullivan. And mm -hmm. They've had guys that – so they just kind of keep plugging guys, McCartney. They just plug them in. Uh, and then the ability for them to run the football – uh, ha they have to have a good offensive line, which I think is down a little bit for them this year. Um, but they they open up holes for guys like Kenyon Washington and James Holland, and then that just opens things up for the pass game and Melville to get to the edge. And Melville certainly has a good pass game as he throws the ball to John Mataluna, who is a record-setting uh, wide receiver. He sort of kills Lafayette whenever he's out on the field. 140 catches in his career for over 2,000 yards. So it's an offense that's very difficult to stop. Uh, maybe in a quick synopsis, how do we stop? Uh, well, you need to make the ball spill to the outside. you got to stop phase, what I talk about phase one, and I talk about this on the inside the huddle. You have to stop the running game inside the tackles first. The inside zone part of the game, uh, the tackle to tackle box, you must allow your linebackers to flow to the football. And our defensive line, again, nose and tackle, the pressure's on them. They have to take up two guys and allow guys like Hinchin and Root to flow to the ball. So that is phase one. Phase two is going to pull the football. So that puts the pressure on your defensive ends, guys like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bo Bosch and on the other side, uh, Dante Leonardo. Mm -hmm. And then you add in an effective guy like Jerry Poe, who's been fantastic. Um, coming off the edge, making plays in the backfield, those type of things. So Lafayette coming off a win, playing well on defense. Can bode well for Lafayette because I think they're coming in here, going to a tough place to play in Andy Kerr Stadium with a lot of confidence. Natural transition to their defense. It's the number one rushing defense in the Patriot League. They only give up about 75 yards per rush. And Lafayette coming off their best rushing game uh, of the year uh, just two weeks ago when they, uh, when they took on Georgetown and won that football game. So how much of the attention – now centers around Tyler West maybe having another really good game or that stable of running backs, or is this all, all going to be about throwing the ball with Drew Reed? Well, they're going to have to throw the football, I think. Uh, you know, uh, they, they do a nice job defensively. You saw what they did last week again against Chase Edmonds, the best mm -hmm. back in the league. They, you need to force uh, Lafayette to throw the football, and most teams have been able to do that. But Tyler West, a little bit of him in there, and uh, obviously add in Michael, uh, Michael Dunn. And Lafayette is coming together a little bit offensive line-wise, just as they did last year at the end of the year. We saw them with their best rushing game against Lehigh, over 150 yards rushing against Lehigh. They did that two weeks ago against Georgetown. So they're going to have to play complementary football, must run the football, and allow their defense time to rest in between possessions. There's no question we have struggled playing Colgate, and in particular, we have struggled when we go to Hamilton. It would be a great win to get us ready for Lehigh the following week in game number 152. That's our look behind the mic for this week. Join us as we'll be on the air at 1 o'clock from Hamilton, New York, Colgate Lafayette.